Hello students. We'll go for the second assignment. So second assignment, I have given you some questions. We are going to discuss that first question for questions. And then we'll go for biological classifications. So in the assignment, the first question was, what is binomial nomenclature? So answer for this binomial nomenclature is nothing but naming an organism by two names. The first name is always called as the genus name and followed by species. So the first name is genus and the second name is called as species name. So it is called as naming an organism by two names is called as binomial nomenclature. Now we will go for the second question. Explain the rules of binomial nomenclature. So, in the rules of binomial nomenclature, very first one is again naming an organism by two names. One is a genus name and the other one is a species name. So, genus name should be written first. Genus should be written first and species should be written as a second one. First name is genus and second name is species. And next point, the genus should be always written in a noun. And the second species should be written in an adjective. So, species should be written in adjective and the genus should be written in a noun. Both the names should be underlined separately. Genus name and species name should be underlined separately. And again, the discoverer name can be written next to the name of the plant or an animal of next to a scientific name. For example, Python Satayun. This is commonly called as pea plant. For this Python Satayun, we are writing a word Lin. So this is nothing but discovered by Linnaeus, Carlos Linnaeus. So next to the scientific name of a plant or animal, we can write the discoverer name. Now, when we are going to print, it should be printed in an italic fonts. Next, here tagonyms. The word tagonym is nothing but the individual or we call a scientific name where the genus and species both are same. For that we use a word tagonym. For that I have given you some of the examples called as Naja Naja. So this is called as King Cobra. So this is Cobra which has similar. Like this, some rules and regulations should be written for the binomial nomenclature. Now, we will go for the third question. So, for the third question, what is linear hierarchy? So, the meaning of linear hierarchy, Carles Linnaeus has classified all the living organisms under seven categories, seven ranks, seven taxon called as kingdom, division or phylum, class, order, family, genus and species. So this is the thing but the lineage hierarchy which has seven taxons, seven ranks of being present. This is the third question. Next, fourth question, write the scientific name of a mango and wheat. So the scientific name of a mango, scientific name of a mango is Mangifera indica and wheat. The scientific name of a wheat is Triticum Eastigum. This is called as the scientific name of a mango as well as wheat. So this is one. Now we will go for the next question. The next question is write the classifications of man. The classification of man here kingdom is animate. Phylum is called carnator. 
प्लस मेमेरिया ऑर्डर प्राइमेट्स फैमिली होमिनिडे फैमिली होमिनिडे जीनस होमो स्पीसीज सेपियंस so this is nothing but the classification of man we will go for the next question we will continue with the next question who coined the term species so the term species is coined by John Ray so this person has coined the word species now we go for the next question expand ICBN and ICZN so ICBN is called as International Code of Botanical Nomenclature. So ICZN is called International International. Code of Zoological Nomenclature. So this is nothing but the expansion of ICBN and ICZN. Now we will go for the next question. What is herbarium? So herbarium is nothing but it is the storehouse of plant specimens. It is the storehouse. Of plant specimens. So, as I mentioned here, the plant twigs are taken, and after taking, it is being pressed or it is being spread out and pressed. After pressing it, it is dried and kept in the newspapers. After that, once it is been dried, then it is mounted on a paper. For that, we use the word herbarium. It is the storehouse of plant specimens. Now, we will go for the next question. Name the largest herbarium in the world. Largest herbarium in the world is called as Royal Royal Botanical Royal Botanical Garden Herbarium Garden Herbarium This is a Kew Britain So this is called as The largest herbarium Present in the world Now we will go for Next question Name the largest botanical garden in India. The largest botanical garden in India is Lalba. Lalba Botanical Garden. This is in Bangalore. So this is called as the largest botanical garden in India is called as Lalba Botanical Garden. Next. We go for the other question. What is taxonomic key? So taxonomic key is nothing but it is a device. It is a device used for quick and easy. Quick and easy identification. Quick and easy identification of an organism of an unknown plant by comparing similarities and dissimilarities by comparing similarities and dissimilarities we go for identifying the unknown plants by using a quick and easier techniques is called as taxonomic key now we go for the last question what is couplet couplet is nothing but it is a pair of each pair of contrasting contrasting questions or statements 
इज पेयर ऑफ कॉन्ट्रास्टिंग कॉन्ट्रास्टिंग क्वेश्चन इज कॉल्ड एस कॉन्ट्रास्टिंग और कॉन्ट्रैक्टिंग कॉन्ट्रास्टिंग कॉन्ट्रास्टिंग क्वेश्चन और स्टेटमेंट इज कॉल्ड एस टपरेट नेक्स्ट वट इज लेट सो लेट इज नथिंग बट लेट इज नथिंग बट ए सिंगल इज सिंगल स्टेटमेंट इज सिंगल स्टेटमेंट और वन स्टेटमेंट सिंगल स्टेटमेंट और वन स्टेटमेंट प्रेजेंट इन ए कपलेट प्रेजेंट इन ए कपलेट इज कॉल्ड एस लेट सो दिस आर नथिंग बट दे आर स्टेटमेंट क्वेश्चन नाउ वी आर स्टेटिंग इन ए next chapter called second chapter biological classifications so we are going for the second chapter called biological classification so what is classification means it is a placing of an organism it is nothing but placing of an organism into a separate groups separate groups based on easy recognizable characters easy recognizable recognizable characters is called classification so it is nothing but placing an organism into a separate groups based on easy recognizable characters is called classification so now we know that there are many there are many living organisms as i mentioned there are 100 million species of being present in this 100 million species 1.7 to 1.8 million species have been identified 1.7 to 1.8 million species have been identified like this all the living organisms cannot be studied under a single heading so it cannot be studied under a single heading so we require a proper system of classification how to separate this how to easily identify an organism for that we want a proper separation of groups separation of classification is required now the classifications requires what are the characters required means the taxonomical levels so here we can easily identify easily identify an organism easily identify an organism to be taxonomical levels to be taxonomical levels so here when we take one plant when we take an organism easily it should be identified based on the taxonomical level that is one of the important character next it is also required to study the organisms present in the past organisms present in the past life so here it is required to know about the organisms present in the past or or it is also required to know about the evolutionary history evolutionary pathway of an organism evolutionary pathway of an organism this means so we know that always man has taken its origin from monkeys so monkey is followed by humans this is the evolutionary pathway like this for classification it requires how an organism has taken its evolutionary pathway so that is also should be known next for classification it also requires the locality of an organism locality so locality of an organism so in which place an organism is present which area the plants can be grown for that also should be remembered next we go for for a classification it requires easily rememberable characters so here when we take a plant or an animal easily we should remember the characters as well as it requires easy identification of systematic position easily 
identification of systematic position is required. So when we know all the type of easy points, it can be called as overall, it is called as bio systematics. Bio systematics. So meaning of this, it is nothing but easily remembering the organisms as well as the systematic position of the characters is easily called as bio systematics. This is nothing but small characters or we say few characters of a classification. Now we will step into the next word. So we will start with the next one called as three domains of life. Three domains. So meaning of this, all the living organisms are mainly classified into three domains. All the living organisms are classified into mainly three domains. So we are going to start. The first one is called as archaea. The first domain is archaea. The second one is called as eubacteria. And the third one is called as eukaryotic organisms. The third one is eukaryotic organisms. Now we will start one after the other. So we will start with the first one called as archaea. The archaea is also called as archaea. Bacteria. Archaea is nothing but archaea bacteria. So this archaea bacteria is nothing but an ancient, ancient, primitive, prokaryotic living organisms. Prokaryotic living organisms. So here, archaea or archaea bacteria is nothing but they are the ancient primitive prokaryotic living organisms present in present in extreme environmental conditions environmental conditions. So here. This is nothing but a type of bacteria present in all the extreme environmental conditions. They are called as archaebacteria. This type of bacteria, they lack, they lack peptidoglycans. They lack peptidoglycans in cell wall. So this type of bacteria, archaebacteria, they lack Peptidoglycans. Peptidoglycans are not there in the cell wall. Next, based on the environmental conditions, they are classified into different types. The first one is called methanogens. Archaebacteria are classified based on how they are present, where they are present, based on that it is classified. The one of this is called as methanogens. So, this bacteria. This methanogen bacteria, they live, this bacteria lives in the marshy areas. Marshy areas. So, once the bacteria lives in a marshy areas, such type of bacteria are called as methanogens. We will go for the second one called as thermoacidophils. Thermoacidophils. So this thermoacidophils, the bacteria lives in hot water. Lives in the thermoacidobacteria. Thermoacidophils. This bacteria lives in hot springs. So in the hot places, in the hot springs, they live. This is called as thermoacidophils. Now we go for the last one here. Halophils. Halophils. This bacteria lives in. This bacteria lives.
using saline water. So here, the word saline water is called as salt water. So if the bacteria is using the saline water, they are called as halophils. So here, this again, I am repeating with the one more heading. So here, archaebacteria are nothing but they are the primitive prokaryotic organisms which are extremely present in all the environments. One is called as methanophils, lives in marshy areas, thermoacidophils, lives in hot springs, halophils, lives in saline water. Now we go for eubacteria. So we go for the second one called as eubacteria. So eubacteria is nothing but the word eu stands for true, well developed. That is called as eubacteria or it is called as true bacteria, well developed bacteria or we normally use the word bacteria. So here it may be called as true bacteria or it may be called as bacteria. So here the word eubacteria, it is nothing but the microscopic unicellular organisms. The microscopic unicellular prokaryotic organisms are called as bacteria. So eubacteria is nothing but microscopic. It cannot be seen to the naked eyes and always there to exist in a single cells called as unicellular and they are prokaryotic cells, prokaryotic organisms and here nucleus is poorly developed. Nucleus is poorly developed. They do not have a well developed nucleus and cytoplasmic organelles are absent. Cytoplasmic organelles are totally absent. Here, the bacteria has a cell wall. The cell wall is made up of peptidoglycans. Cell wall. Cell wall is made up of peptidoglycans. Muramic acid. And proteins. So, all this combined together, it forms a cell wall. So, this type of bacteria are being present. Examples for new bacteria is, we know that normal bacteria can be taken. Bacteria can be taken as an example and one more example can be taken as blue-green algae. Blue-green algae is nothing but nonstop. It is a filamentous algae or blue-green algae. This also comes under U bacteria. Now we'll go for the next heading. So we'll go for the next one called as third one, eukarya. Eukarya is nothing but eukaryotic organisms. So here eukaryotic organisms are nothing but the advanced organisms, well-developed organisms. So it is called as well developed organisms. The meaning of well developed here, the nucleus is well developed. Well developed nucleus is present, hence it is called as eukaryotic organisms. Here, the organisms are advanced. Advanced organisms have been present. The nucleus is well developed with all the four components nuclear membrane. Nucleoplasm, nucleoli and chromatin network is present when all the four components are there. We use a very well developed nucleus and it also has well developed cytoplasmic organelles. So all the cytoplasmic organelles are also being present. All the cytoplasmic organelles are being present. So in the higher plants, higher animals, this can be noticed. So Eukaryotes are present from the kingdoms. So kingdom Monera do not have this. Kingdom Monera has prokaryotes. Whereas kingdom Protista, kingdom Protista, kingdom Mycota, kingdom plantae or metaphyta 
शेंडर आनीमिले आ मेटाजोआ सो ऑल दिस फोर किंगडम्स हैज द प्रेजेंस ऑफ वेल डेवलप्ड यूकैरियोटिक ऑर्गेनिजम्स सो हियर दे हैव अ वेल डेवलप्ड न्यूक्लियस में साइटोप्लाज्मिक ऑर्गेनिज्म्स ऑफ इन प्रेजेंट हेंस इट इज कॉल्ड एज वेल डेवलप्ड और एडवांस ऑर्गेनिजम्स नाउ वी गो फॉर द नेक्स्ट स्टडी सो वी आर गोइंग फॉर द नेक्स्ट स्टडी कॉल्ड एज किंगडम क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ लाइफ फॉर्म्स सो हियर already has a mention about classifications is nothing but placing an organism into separate groups placing an organisms placing an organism into separate groups so into separate groups based on based on easily recognizable easily recognizable characters is called classifications so i repeat this classification is nothing but placing an organism into separate groups based on based on easily recognizable characters so here based on the characters the classifications has been started the first person By name Aristotle. Aristotle started first attempt made by the Aristotle for the classifications. So here Aristotle is called as the father of biology. He made a first attempt for classifying. So this person classified. So we will take plants in the first attempt or in the beginning. The classification was done by Aristotle. He took the plants and classified the plants into three types. He classified the plants into three groups. He classified the plants into three groups. One is called as herbs, shrubs, and trees. So Aristotle in the First attempts and the first beginning, he has classified the plants into three groups: herbs, shrubs, and trees. Next, Aristotle started classifying the animals also. So he started classifying the animals into two groups. He classified the animals into two groups. One is called animia. So here, animia is nothing but animals without animals without blood animals without blood is called as animia and the other one is called as animia animia so here the second one is called as animia the meaning of this animals with blood animals with blood so here Aristotle classified the animals based on the presence of the blood absence of the blood next again Aristotle classified the animals based on the reproduction based on reproduction he has classified it into two classified it into one is called as vivipara vivipara and vivipara so over para is nothing but called as egg laying animals so we know that so based on the reproduction aristotle classified it as ovipara the animals which lay the eggs or egg laying animals so we know that here platypus platypus comes under mammals so you want to address the eggs and the common example is called as birds so birds and some of the reptiles they lay the eggs now we go for the second one called as vivipara so here vivipara is nothing but giving birth to the animals giving birth so birth giving animals So here 
Vivi Prana is nothing but birth giving animals. All animals give one birth. And there is a connection between the mother and the young ones by a placental connection she has been present. Example, mammals. All the mammals has the presence of placental connection between the mother and the baby. Hence it is called as birth giving animals. So this is nothing but the first type of our classifications made by the Aristotle. He made first attempts for classification. Now we will step into different kingdom classifications. Now we will go for different different kingdom classifications. Different kingdom classifications have been discovered. Now we go one after the other. The first one is called as two kingdom classification. Two kingdom classification. So in two kingdom classification, this was proposed by this was proposed by Carlos Linnaeus. So it was proposed by Carlos Linnaeus in the year 1758. I'll repeat this. Two kingdom classification was proposed by Carlos Linnaeus in 1758 and Carlos Linnaeus is called as father of taxonomy. So the father of taxonomy classified all the living organisms. Classified all the living organisms into two kingdoms. He classified into two kingdoms. The first one is called as Kingdom Plantae. Kingdom Plantae. In this, all the plants was being included. All the plants was being included under the Kingdom Plantae. And the second one is called as Kingdom Animalia. So in this Kingdom Animalia, here all the animals have been included. All the animals have been included under this kingdom. So like this, two kingdom classification was done by Carlos Linnaeus, but it was not accepted. Now we go for the next one, called as three kingdom classification. Three kingdom classification. This three kingdom classification was proposed by Harness Heckel. So, three kingdom classification was proposed by Harness Heckel in 1866. In 1866, he proposed the three kingdom classification. According to three kingdom classification, all the living organisms was Separated into three kingdoms. The first kingdom is Kingdom Protista. Kingdom Protista. In this Kingdom Protista, the bacteria, prokaryotic cells, bacteria, prokaryotic cell, and blue green only. Blue green algae was included under this kingdom. We go for the second one. The kingdom planted. In kingdom planted, all plants was included under this kingdom. Plants. So we go for the third one. Kingdom. Animal. Here, in this kingdom, all the animals have been included. All the animals have been included under this. Again, this system is not considered. Now we'll go for the next one. So we'll go for four kingdom classification. So four kingdom classification was proposed by Copland. So this person, Copland, 
has classified the four kingdom classification in the year 1956. In the year 1956, the Copeland has classified all the living organisms into four kingdoms. So the first kingdom was Kingdom Monera. So in this kingdom Monera, again microscopic organisms and unicellular prokaryotic organisms was included under Kingdom Monera. Next. Kingdom Protista. So here in this kingdom he has included about algae and protozoans. Algae and protozoans was made into a separate kingdom. Kingdom Plantae or Metaphyta. In this, all the plants was included. Eukaryotic plants was included under a kingdom called as Plantae. Next, kingdom Animale or Metazoa. So, in this kingdom Animale or Metazoa, all the well developed animals was included at this and different phylums, 11 phylums has been included under this. So this is called as four kingdom classification and again even this is not accepted. We will go for the next one. So we will go for the next one called as five kingdom classification. So here all the living organisms is classified into five kingdoms. So this Five kingdom classification is proposed by or it is given by proposed by Robert H. Whitaker. Robert H. Whitaker in 1969 he has given five kingdom classification. So the right type of classification, accepted type of classification is five kingdom classifications. So all the living organisms was classified into five kingdoms by R. H. Whitaker. Robert H. Whitaker, R. H. Whitaker classified all the living organisms into five kingdoms and it is a accepted classification. So we go for one after the other. So the first one is Kingdom Monera. So in this kingdom Monera, he has included bacteria, unicellular organisms. Unicellular organisms. Bacteria, unicellular organisms was included under Kingdom Monera. The second one is Kingdom Protista. So in this Kingdom Protista, Whitaker classifies this algae is being included here as well as the microscopic organisms called as protozoans. So here algae and protozoans has been included into the Kingdom Protista. So third one is Kingdom Mycota. So here this kingdom is nothing but a group of plants. A group of plants which cannot prepare their own food. A group of plants which cannot produce their own food. They are called as heterotrophs or heterotrophic called as fungi. So here all the fungi is made into a separate kingdom called as kingdom mycota. Mushroom yeast all this comes under this kingdom. Next. Kingdom plantae or metaphyta. Here all advanced plants with eukaryotic characters have been 
were included under this. In this, there are four divisions are there. As I mentioned earlier, four divisions. First one as bryophytes, bryophytes, amphibians of the plant kingdom, non-vascular plants. The second division is called as pteridophytes. They are called as shade-loving plants. They are commonly called as ferns. The third division is called as gymnosperms. The word gymnosperms it is called as naked seeded plants. And the fourth division is called as angiosperms. The word angiosperms are nothing but closed seeded plants. The seeds are covered by a fruit wall. Hence they are called as closed seeded plants. All the advanced plants come under angiosperms. They come under this kingdom called as metaphyta. Next. We go for the fifth kingdom called as kingdom animini. It is also called as metazoa. So here all the eleven phylums have been included under this. So here the first phylum called as phylum protozoans. Phylum protozoans comes under protista from porifera from porifera to cardata eleven phylums comes under animal kingdom so here we know that porifera the next one is called as cylindrata tinopora phylum platyhelminthes ashelminthes anilida arthropoda echinodermata mollusca Hemicordata and Cordata, all this comes under the eleven kingdoms comes under the animal kingdom called as Metazoa. So this is called as right system of classification. So here five kingdoms is very important and this was discovered by R. X. Wedekar. We will go for the next study. So we are going for the next one. Kingdom Monera. So I have given you five kingdoms. Now we are going to discuss one after the other the general characters of the kingdoms. First we are starting with Kingdom Monera. So in this Kingdom Monera, we know that all the unicellular organisms are the use word ancient prokaryotic cells. Ancient prokaryotic cells like RKA. Even this comes under Kingdom Monera. So, in this RKA, they lack peptidoglycons in the cell wall. And the next one is, they are primitive. The primitive nucleus. It's not well developed. Primitive nucleus and cytoplasmic organelles are absent. Cytoplasmic organelles are absent. So, all this is included under the kingdom Monera. Now, we are stepping one after the other called as characters of Monera. So, we are starting one after the other called as characters of Monera. So, in this very first important character is the organisms coming under this are microscopic. The organisms coming under this kingdom monera, they are always called as microscopic. The meaning of microscopic, they cannot be seen by the naked eyes. With the help of a microscope, we can see this organism. Hence, it is called as microscopic. And all the animals coming under this are called unicellular. The meaning of unicellular, single celled organisms. Here, the kingdom Monera has single celled organisms. And they are prokaryotic organisms. Prokaryotic organisms. So, the meaning of prokaryotic organisms here. They are primitive nucleus, poorly developed nucleus organisms are there, hence it is called as prokaryotic, microscopic, unicellular, prokaryotic organisms. Next. 
the organisms coming under this kingdom they are solitary the organisms coming under this may be solitary the meaning of solitary they occur singly the organisms live singly freely in the water hence it is called as solitary or they may live in colonies so it is called as colonial the word colonial is the part they always occur in colonies they live together is called as colonies or they may occur in filamentous they occur in filamentous forms the meaning of filamentous form the cells are arranged one after the other to form a filament so as i use the word unicellular they combine together to form a colony or they arrange one after the other to form a filament so it is called as filamentous form next the organisms coming out of this they lack they lack peptidoglycans they lack peptidoglycans in in archaea in archaea but when you take bacteria is an example so when you take a bacteria is an example here the bacteria cell wall has the bacteria bacteria cell wall has peptido glycans muramic acid muramic acid and proteins are present in the cell wall so in the archaea bacteria cell wall peptido glycans are absent whereas in the bacteria there is a presence of a cell wall this cell wall has the presence of peptido glycans muramic acid or we can use the word murine as well as proteins of it present in the cell wall so we go for the next point so here the next point is we will take an example called as bacteria the bacteria has various shapes the bacteria has various shapes of it present based on the shapes it is again classified so one is usually called as the spherical shaped bacteria the spherical shaped bacteria is called as cocci cocci when we go for a rod shaped bacteria this is called as bacilli or bacillus cocci or coccus is a spherical shape bacilli or bacillus is a rod shape next when we go for coiled coiled shape so coiled shaped bacteria is called as spirulum spirula spirulum the next one is comma shaped bacteria comma shaped bacteria is called vibrio so based on the comma shaped is called as vibrio based on the shape there are different types of bacteria so been present next the bacteria is present in all the places so bacteria is present in all the places it may be present in some hot places cold places as well as in all the places so we call it has cosmopolitan so it is present in all the places so it is called as omni present or cosmopolitan cosmopolitan in occurrence cosmopolitan in occurrence so this is one next next the bacteria or the kingdom monera has the outermost slimy layer outermost slime or slimy layer called as capsule capsule or we use a word capsid next to the capsule next to the capsule or capsid there is a presence of plasma membrane here there is a very important point the plasma membrane 
is always inward folded. Inwardly folded. I will discuss next to the cell wall. Next to the cell wall is plasma membrane. Next to the cell wall is plasma membrane. The plasma membrane is inwardly folded. Inward, inwardly folded to form to form finger-like projections. To form a finger-like projections called mesosomes. So this is important. Plasma membrane is inwardly folded to form a finger-like projections called as mesosomes. Here, mesosomes helps in respiration. Mesosomes helps in respiration. So, in a prokaryotic cells or in Kinda Monera, there is no lungs or there is no well-developed mitochondria for respiration. Here, we blindly use the word mesosomes as well as oxysomes is also there. But very important is mesosomes helps in respiration. Next. So, the cytoplasmic organelles are totally absent. Cytoplasmic organelles are not there. The nucleus is poorly developed. Hence, we call it as a prokaryotes. Next. We go for the other one here. Kingdom Monera has mode of nutrition is mode of nutrition is it has both mode of nutrition it has both called as autotrophic as well as heterotrophic mode of nutrition is both autotrophic as well as heterotrophic now when you go for autotrophic the meaning of autotrophic they can prepare their own food is called as autotrophic again it is classified into two types one is called as photosynthetic photosynthetic and the other one is called as chemosynthetic so the meaning of photosynthetic there is a presence of a green pigment in a lower organisms there is a green pigment called bacterial chlorophyll bacterial chlorophyll that bacterial chlorophyll can prepare their own food hence they are called as photosynthetic bacteria example green bacteria example green bacteria is called as photosynthetic whereas the second one is called as chemosynthetic bacteria the meaning of chemosynthetic here the bacteria produces some chemicals like hydrogen bacteria, sulfur bacteria, nitrogen bacteria. This forms the food for it. Hence it is called as chemosynthetic bacteria. So here they produce the chemicals and that chemical acts as a nutrition for it. Now we go for heterotrophic. So we go for the next one is heterotrophic bacteria. So again, heterotrophs means they cannot prepare their own food. They depend upon others for the food. Again, there are two types. One is called as parasitic. The meaning of parasitic, the bacteria depends upon other living organisms. So, here the host is called as living organisms. The bacteria depends upon other living organisms. They are called as parasitic bacteria. Next, we go for saprophytic bacteria. The meaning of saprophytic bacteria. So, here the bacteria, they live on the non-living. They are present on the dead diet. Decay. So they are called as saprophytic bacteria. The bacteria which cleans, which clears the dead and decay, hence they are also called as scavengers. Bacterial scavengers, they remove the waste. Now we we'll go for the next one. Next point. Here the kingdom Monera has the mode of reproductions. Mode of Reproduction. So we know that the mode of reproduction, reproduction is nothing but the formation of young ones. Again, here there are two types of reproductions. One is called as asexual type of reproduction. So the word asexual type of reproduction, again, here there are three words. One is called as 
binary fashion. The second one is called as budding, and the third one is called endospore formation. Endospore formation. So this is called as asexual reproduction. Notice it under kingdom monera. Next, we go for sexual reproduction. So sexual reproduction, especially in bacteria, is of three types. Sexual reproduction in bacteria is of three types. The first one is called transformation. Transformation. The second one is called as conjugation. And the third one is called as transduction. So this I will repeat in the next classes in full detail. So here the sexual reproduction is called as transformation, conjugation and transduction comes under this. Now we we'll go for the next one. Here the examples, the examples coming under this are called as archaea, bacteria, true bacteria, as well as blue green algae, blue green algae called nostrum. So all those are some of the examples present in Kingdom Monera.